Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again. In today's video, we're gonna be making a custom Vaporwave Viper Ultimate. So with that, let's check it out. So here we've got the Viper Ultimate. Now the first thing we need to do anytime we're doing any kind of painting like this is do a tear down to break everything down to individual components. To do this, I'm using sort of a standard plastic pry tool that you might use for opening up various electronics and a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive on the PTFE feet, which will expose the screws on the underside of the mouse. I would recommend using more of like a hair dryer because a heat gun gets a little bit too hot. And if you're not careful, you can actually run the risk of melting the plastic of the mouse itself. This part's a very simple operation. You just use a little bit of heat to soften up that adhesive. And in most cases, the feet just slide right off. Pretty much exact same thing you would do if you're just replacing the feet on the bottom of your mouse. So now with those screws exposed, we just need to pop those off. Razor uses a diamond shaped screw, uh, I guess to keep people from opening up their mice. The only bit that I have for it, unfortunately, doesn't have the screwdriver piece anymore, so I had to use this stupid little piece of crap and do it by hand, but luckily they're not in there very hard, so it came out nice and easy. So with the mouse cracked open, we are gonna just separate the two halves by unplugging the wires from the main board to split it into two pieces. I'm not gonna be doing anything with the bottom of the mouse, so we're just gonna put that off to the side for now. So here's where the first screw up starts to happen and my inexperience with this kind of stuff does start to show a little bit. So originally I'm thinking, I need to fully disassemble the mouse to get a good paint job. And I didn't realize at the time that I could individually remove all the mouse buttons and the plate over the palm rest and just paint those. So I'm thinking here, I need to remove the rubber grips on the sides so I don't paint those and start to use the heat gun to remove it. Unfortunately, I got a little bit too close and warped those thumb buttons in the process. So they do look a little bit ugly. At this point, I'm hoping that the paint is gonna help hide that some. And with it being an ambidextrous mouse, you know, I'm like, well, maybe I can just relocate the ones from one side to the other. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work that way. And the real kick in the nuts is when I go to finish disassembling everything, I realized that I didn't actually have to remove those rubber grips at all in the first place. So hey, it's the first one, you live, you learn, you ruin a mouse. And after that little heart attack, the rest of the teardown was pretty uneventful, just fully disassembling the mouse down to the most basic components. So now that I've got everything that I want to paint ready to prime, I like to do this by just using some double-sided tape, put it on like a paper plate or some cardboard, something like that to take it outside to spray it. Now, ideally you would do this on a warm, dry day, but I filmed this during the big Texas blizzard, so I didn't bring you guys along for the priming process. Instead, I'll just show you a little bit of a before and after. And really, as long as the can is warm, it's not gonna cool down enough to get it outside, so it should be okay. So here's what we're working with in terms of colors. Because I have an airbrush, I wanted to use acrylic paints through the airbrush to give me a little bit more control. You could use a rattle can, but I've got an airbrush, so I'm gonna use it. So before I start laying down the base coats, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm gonna take some of this white acrylic ink and load it up into the airbrush, and I'm gonna use this to pre-highlight certain areas of the mouse, which is gonna make the paint job look a little bit more dynamic by having the paints that I put over top of it really pop out and look a little bit more brighter because all paints are translucent to some degree. So if you do a step like this, it's gonna help make that paint job just look a little bit more interesting. So I'm starting here by just kind of laying in some white in the finger grooves, maybe putting a little bit here on the palm grip. Now I realize I am covering up the where the LEDs come through on this mouse and the grip, but I feel like when your hands on it, you don't see it anyway, so I really don't care about covering that up. I'm not gonna waste the time to mask that. So you can see here I'm just kind of putting in like a little bit of brightness around the edges, which is gonna kind of create a little bit of a fade effect, um, which is kind of what I'm going for here with this sort of vapor wave um, design. And just get all that in there so we can start base coating. So we're gonna start off with the first color, which is Vallejo's Royal Purple. And I've got this thinned down in the airbrush. And the idea is that I wanna just slowly build up the opacity and still leave a little bit of that pre-highlight that I did there if I can. Um, you'll see here, I, I did mix in a little bit more flow improver because we were just a little bit too thick. Um, and real, the concept here that I'm going for was originally I was gonna do a blue on the mouse buttons for one and two. I was gonna do pink highlights on the thumb buttons and then do this purple on, on the actual palm rest. But because I melted those buttons a little bit, I was thinking a darker color might hide that a little bit better. So I decided to switch the teal to the thumb buttons and do the pink for mouse one and two. And basically we're just gonna continue to build this up until we get it about where we want it and then move on to the mouse buttons. 
Now we're moving on to the pink and I really liked how with that little highlight that we did, this pink is really starting to look really nice. And with going with the vaporwave design, I really wanted to kind of give the illusion of sort of a glowy effect or really wanted to have at least some of it be really bright and have contrast with some of it being darker. And I do think we achieved that on this a little bit. Unfortunately, I did have a spot where some part of the paint got smudged a little bit and I had to thicken things up to hide that. So I did kind of lose out a little bit on the pre-highlight a bit, but I still, uh, you know, pretty overall happy with how the paint turned out on these. Busting out the turquoise now just to hit those side thumb buttons a little bit. I'm really hoping that with this being a little bit of a darker color, it's gonna mask up where I kind of botched that with the heat gun. And then as I was doing that, I decided I didn't really want this to be just flat blocked colors. I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting. And I think having the airbrush really lends itself to doing a little bit more of this kind of stuff. You get more fine control. So why should I just make it a couple of flat colors? So decided to hit the back edge of the palm rest piece here and just kind of start like a little bit of a fade. And so I'm just trying to keep it a little bit thicker at the bottom. My plan is to try and highlight the edges of this piece, again, to kind of create that glowy effect. And with Vaporwave, you know, it tends to be more of that 80s style lines and neon and stuff like that. So I think this is gonna lend itself well to it. And as I'm starting this process too, I start to think that, well, mouse one and two are gonna be this bright pink. So maybe I should have this turquoise gradient coming up from the back of the palm rest and then have this pink kind of fading in. So even though I lose a bit of the purple, I think maybe I went a little too ham with the fades on these a bit. Uh, I do like having that transition from the mouse one and two fading back into the purple and then hitting that turquoise at the back. So now that everything is airbrushed, I wanted to take it to the next level. So I decided to throw in a little bit of brushwork, get a little bit more fancy. And what I'm doing here is actually a technique known in the mini painting world as edge highlighting. And it's a little <laughs> ridiculous for those of you that might be familiar with that. It's not like we're painting Space Marines here. You know, we're, we're painting a mouse. But I do think the same concept of just hitting the edges with a really nice bright color, especially for the theme that I'm going with here is gonna help sell that sort of glow effect. And keeping in mind that this piece is gonna fit back over the mouse and line up with the grips and the back piece of the mouse, having these really bright edges there, I wanted to have create that sort of effect that it is glowing, you know, with those different seams. So there's, you know, brighter things emanating from it and flashing up the mouse. And so that's exactly what we've got going on here. Starting with a brighter turquoise around the back and sides and then hitting it with a lighter pink toward the top parts. I actually experimented with hitting it with some white inside of that as well. And while it looks cool, I think because this is a mouse, kind of taking the approach that might look good with like miniatures doesn't necessarily translate the same. So I ended up going back over that to mute it down some and just go with the first original highlight because I think that was just a little too overkill for a mouse. I mentioned before that I was kind of bummed that I overpowered the purple a little bit with those gradients. So in effort to bring that color back some, I decided to throw a bit on these little grooves where it tapers off on the ends of mouse one and two. And really all I'm doing here is just letting the geometry of the mouse kind of dictate where I should put color. I also wanted to have something on the inside of those mouse buttons as well where the scroll wheel is gonna go. So I wrapped this all the way around the inner part of those buttons as well. And I think it did a good job to help tie in that colorway a bit more and make sure that purple is well represented. So here we have all the components painted and ready for reassembly. The only thing I didn't show again because of the weather is the clear coat. I hit it with several coats of enamel gloss because this is gonna be handled. It's a mouse, obviously, you know, all you do is touch it with your hands. So I wanted to make sure that that paint is gonna hold up well. So I wanted to give it something durable and enamel gloss is definitely gonna do that. So we're gonna get it all reassembled. You know, in some of these shots, you're gonna see that there's a couple areas like this thumb or mouse button going on here. You can see where it's a little bit melted where it's gonna go underneath that uh, palm rest plate, which does hide it pretty well. And again, the thumb buttons on the left side got cooked a bit by the heat gun. You know, it's a learning process. Uh, the next time I do this, I'm hopefully you know not gonna make that mistake again. But I think overall, all things considered, with this is the first time doing some type of custom painting teardown project like this, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm looking forward to either doing a keyboard that's gonna match this same colorway or doing another mouse. I know I said I was gonna take this month off from YouTube and I'm kind of a workaholic in that way, so it was hard for me to step away, but I thought, well, 
might as well do a project that's gonna be fun and at least a palette cleanser from the more kind of mundane style of just doing reviews all the time. So if you guys have ideas on other colorways or themes or something for another project like this, let me know in the comments because I do plan on doing another one of these here in the near future. So finishing up the assembly, the last piece here, we're just popping that plate over the palm rest. I really liked how those highlights really defined the edges. So we're the plastic buds up against the rubber grips, I think makes it way more dramatic. And the Viper Ultimate already has a pretty cool geometry. So this really accentuates that. But now that we're pretty much fully assembled, let's check out some beauty shots. Well, that's it for the video guys. I really enjoyed making this one and I'm looking forward to doing more stuff like this in the future. So if you enjoyed it as well, make sure you hit that like button and let me know in the comments down below which one of these you know, themes or styles or colorways, whatever you wanna see in the comments below. And of course, if you made it this far into the video and you're new here, I'd love to see you subscribe and you can follow me on Twitter at BrainBeanGaming. But as always guys, stay safe out there, take care of each other and I'll see you in the next one.